Hey everybody, welcome back to Dragonheart Crafts. Today, I'm going to show you how we're going to put this pattern onto my B tool program. Um, so I'm going to show you what the program icon looks like off of my computer. Um, depending on what system you have, uh, the person who has created this um, updates periodically. Um, and he's been having some issues with the program being updated for like Mac computers with the iOS operating system but I think he's gotten that fixed but I use Windows but anyway so we're gonna go ahead and get right down to it so let me get my camera turned around and I'll let you guys know when we're ready to start okay guys so this is the program that I use is called btool4 and this is what the icon looks like it just looks like a pile of different sized beads um, so we're gonna go ahead and open it up Try and zoom out and adjust the camera. So as you can see, I've already opened it up to go ahead and get a head start. I'm going to try and zoom the camera in and adjust it as best as possible so you guys can see. Now when you first open it, um, let me back out again. This is what you're going to see, and I'll turn my computer some too to try and make the screen a little clearer. So this is what you're going to see. You're going to have yourself a blank slate here, and then over here is where your your bead, pal your bead palette is, and you can click in here, and you can see all of the different kinds of bead colors with some names, and there's just a whole bunch of different colors here and they all vary between like silver lined or transparent opaque matte um, gold lined lusters rainbows there's just all different kinds of different bead colors in here so and then here is your pat um sorry right up here you can choose between a square stitch a loom a brick stitch a gourd um, there's different peyote styles, there's a tubular peyote, um, a raw right angle weave, um, and the regular weave, two bead weave, and three bead weave. So this will tell you what stitch you're in. I'd normally do square or loom, both are pretty similar. And so for this, for this we're going to come back over here to the main project, and we're going to look at our blank slate here. I'm going to zoom mine in because I like to be able to see where my beads are going properly and just over to the left of your work surface you got all your different tools here you can add shapes in there um, this is a line you've got a fill in which is your paint bucket um, this is a color picker uh, your selection section your eraser and your pencil so that'll allow you to just fill in your colors and everything so you adjust this to the size you want I do a 200 zoom um, but each one is different and get you bigger so this is 300 zoom 400 zoom 500 zoom and so on so we'll go back to 200 and since this is set to a square stitch which is what this project is gonna be let me show you real quick what some of these other stitches are gonna look like so you got square you got loom which doesn't change You've got a brick stitch which changes slightly, looks like a brick wall. And then you've got a gourd stitch, which I've never done, but in my opinion it looks like a um, sideways brick. Then you have your regular peyote stitch, which again is like another form of a peyote stitch, but you don't, um, you, you add into your... Um, spaces here as you add in where your brick stitch you don't you just layer it like you would a brick wall so but that's those ones I'm not gonna show you the rest because I haven't seen those myself and I'd like to see them first before I show them to you guys so we're gonna go back to square stitch because that's what we're gonna be using and we're gonna go way back over here and what I like to do when I go to choose my colors and um I do have a approximate color list here on my phone. So I'm going to go ahead and go through my palette right here. And with the palette, it goes, it'll do generic colors, um, the Mayuki Delicas and sizes, 
um, 8, 10, 11, and 15. It'll do the Mayuki rounds in 6, 8, 10, 11, and 15. And the Percosa in size 11, Pony Beads in size 9 millimeter, and um, a size 5 in the Mayuki rounds. The Toho, um, Echo, Treasures and rounds are also in here for this selection. I just do with I just do the Mayuki Mayuki Delicas in size 11 because that's as close to the colors as I can get. With your generic colors, you know, of course it's got your regular, you know, generic colors and stuff. Just your generics. Now, when I did this pattern before, because I have already made this, if I'm going to be honest with you guys, I use the my Yuki Delicas, not in size 10, in size 11, because that's what came up first. So I'm going to go through my list that I have here, and you can either just scroll down through your color palette, or um, like I've already done, I've taken a picture, and all I have to do is just type in like a certain particular um, particular color number, and like. I have a metallic gold, so I'll click that. And what you want to do to get your palette started, and this is what I like to do, is I put a bead right there over on the side I'm going to be starting on, so it starts my palette selection. So, and then I had a black, which I'm also going to put in right there. Um... And then I'm going to come down on my list and find my next color, which was white. Um, 731. I go way down for this. 731. And then 47, go back up on my list. Forty-seven was a cobalt or a blue. Um let's see. Six oh two was a red. I'll go down to my six hundred somethings. Try and find 602, which was a red. Okay. And then 672, even though it's not my next, next color on my list. 672 was a cream satin. And then I'm going to go back to my 700 line. So I'm going to come back here. Sorry, guys. And I'm going to look for an opaque yellow and an opaque orange. So I need a 722 and a 721. So I'm just going to click up. So there's a 721, my 722, and there's all my bead colors. Now, here is where your list is. This is where your list is going to be. Um, oops, sorry. So that's going to be your list. And if you add more colors, you're going to get the, the, um, the scroll down system. So, but there's all of the colors to start with. Now, what I like to do is um I'm gonna zoom you guys out just a tad so you can kind of see my thing here so now you can see my whole screen so here's my color palette so I can go over through here and I can get my colors that I want to use next and start them off right here but you don't want to close out the ones you've already got out here until you've used up all your colors on your list. That way, when you go to fill this in, you're not going to lose your color that you already picked out. So I like to pick my colors, stick one or two here on the on my pattern palette, and then just work out from there. So we also need to adjust our our width of our project. So this is um, 19. Um, 19 rows and 88 columns and we will be able to slide over when we need to but for now we're just where we're supposed to be and I'm gonna start with the black but I have to count these out so I get them in the right spot so I need to make sure there's about nine 
eight or nine in each slot. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine right here. Oh, I got on the eraser. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, nine there. I'm gonna go from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we'll start here. Because we don't want to um we don't wanna we wanna make sure there's nine in each. So there's nine on this side, there's nine on this side. One, two. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, yeah. Nine on this side, nine on the other side. That's what you want to start with. You want to start with an equal amount on either side when you do this. Unless your pattern requires you to have like an odd count somewhere in it. So but we're going to start with the black and just kind of work from there. So we've done one black. We're going to do three black. And we're going to do five. And then we're going to do six. No, we're going to do seven twice. So that's where we're going. Oops. I'm going to do that. Okay. And then when we do those two, we're going to cross down again. And then again. Now this is the feather we're working on right now, and so when we hit this one, we go down three more, so there's four on either side, and then we're going to fill these in. Now I know when I drew out the pattern, there's a white space in here, in this set, but we'll get to that later. But for now, we're just going to kind of do an outline. So we're going to end here, we're going to go down one down one over two then down one and over three so we're gonna do that again so it looks looks right and we're gonna fill that in okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna erase that black that we put up there earlier and go back to this okay now we're gonna go after our gray which we have and we're going to go ahead and do this outline right here that we started okay now we can erase that gray one and just uh, go to the next color so we'll hit the blue we'll do the same thing we did with the gray we're going to just do this pattern like so and basically when you're building your pattern you're just like shifting through your colors following your pattern if you already hand drew it you could also just go with your homemade pattern that you did on excuse me, that you did on your graph paper or whatever paper you used to make your pattern. But I like to do on graph paper and then I like to work on the actual B2 program so I can actually print it out in the proper colors. I can have a color list as a cover sheet and um, just kind of work out for there. Now you don't have to use these exact colors that are here on this pattern. You can change this up. You don't have to use these same colors. You can always use different colors. You can always change the pattern in any way you need to make it work for you. But I am making this for a adopted dad in California and I sent him a <clears throat> draft of it and he said he liked it. So I'm not gonna go and go all the way through this but at least you know the basics of how to use this particular program. But, um, but yeah, just keep adding your colors following your pattern until, and I'm gonna go ahead and just show you guys um, what the official pattern looked like. And the great thing about VTool is you can save your patterns or you can use the ones that they've already got built into it. And it looks like they've put out some new ones which I haven't seen. So they've got a panda, they got a horse. A horse actually looks pretty cool. But it seems like they've only added about two new patterns in the last few months. But they have lots of different patterns so nope they've added three they've added a lion too so but you know that's you know that's something you can do but for the pattern that we that I was showing you how 
this is what the official project looked like. So this is what it officially came out to. And I'm going to zoom it out just a little bit. And then I'm going to zoom you guys in. And adjust accordingly. So you guys can at least see it. So this was the final project. This is what happened. So this is the exact same colors as the ones that I listed. And um, this is basically a similar thing as to what year one project might be. So if you want to get bead tool, you go to um, go to Google or whatever you use to search for certain certain things and type in bead tool four. Bead tool is one word and then you use the number four. It'll show you the website and I think it's beadtool4.net or it could be just beadtool.net. And it's about fifty dollars unless they change the price, but once you buy it, you own it. And you'll get new updates whenever the person who created this program gets new updates. But this is the program I use. It's the one I would recommend for any bead weaver. And I don't know, they this person may even add new, you know, um, may add new, like, stitches. Or I'm sure they're going to be adding more patterns to the program. Um, I don't know how often they update their palettes, but... This is just the colors that they have right now. So, but, you know, fiddle with it if you buy it. If you already have it, you know, let me know how you like the program. Just leave a comment down below and let me know how you like the program. Um, but this is just what I use to create my patterns and, um, you know, excuse me, and try and make them more clear and better. For what I like to do because I like to have a clear printout of what I'm making and with bead tool when you go to print it out it not only gives you on the front your color list in a color code but it gives you the actual pattern in a printout grid and then it gives you like a written out color code um, row by row you know what color goes where and that way you can you can if you want to follow the color code sheet follow the color code sheet I don't keep the color sheets I just keep the picture pattern because I am a visual picture person I don't understand the codes very well I don't remember all the colors by their code number like some people do but this is the program I use and like I said I would recommend it so if you have any questions comments just leave them down below uh, at the bottom underneath the description box um, I will post my um, my Facebook info and my email address so you guys can get in contact with me and I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial please do try and get um, this program if you are a bead weaver and you or I wouldn't say maybe you could try using it for cross stitch. I don't know how well it would work for cross stitch, but you know, since cross stitch is basically little squares like this, and you could probably use it to make like little 8-bit, you know, 8-bit character sprite type creations, but just use it to, you know, your advantage. Do what you want with it. Try it out and let me know what you think. But you guys have a good and safe wonderful weekend and a happy soon to be new year. And I hope everybody had a great Christmas. So have a good one, guys. Bye.